Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we are doing a lesson today on Newton's second law of motion. So this builds on the previous lesson, which is Newton's first law. You'll recall that Newton's first law of motion just basically tells us that um, objects that have mass have inertia, which is to say that if something is moving, it's going to want to keep on moving at a constant velocity in a straight line. Or if something's not moving, it's going to want to stay not moving. But then there's that unless part of Newton's first law, which is unless an unbalanced force acts on the object. And so things keep doing what they're doing unless there's an unbalanced force. Well, Newton's second law comes in and tells us what happens if there is an unbalanced force. So Newton's second law tells us that unbalanced forces cause acceleration. Now, it should be fairly obvious that not every object is going to accelerate in the same way. So, for example, if you were to push a pebble with a certain force and you were to push a boulder with a certain force, they wouldn't necessarily have the same acceleration. What we say is that the acceleration of the object is proportional to the force, which means more force, more acceleration. But it's inversely proportional to the mass of the object, which means more mass gives us less acceleration. If we were to write this out as a formula, one way we could write that would be to say that F net is equal to M times A. So a net force acts on an object, it's equal to its mass times its acceleration. Now we can note that the units here for F net would be a kilogram times a meter per second squared. Well that is the exact same thing as a Newton. So just like we saw before when we talked about gravity, gravity Fg equals Mg, the units are Newtons, so are they with net forces. Net forces aren't some new force, they're basically a combination of forces that are acting on an object. So we'll see some examples in a second here. Um, first let's start with a pretty easy one. A five kilogram block is pushed to the right along a frictionless track uh, with a force of 10 Newtons. So one of the things we're gonna get in the habit of is kind of drawing pictures of what's going on here. So you can imagine that I am pushing this force to the side here. Now, I don't know what to call that force, so I'm gonna call it FA. FA is what we call an applied force. And to be honest with you, it's just like, it's a force we use as kind of a catch-all. It's like, I don't know what to call this force, I eh, just call it F applied. And the thing to recognize is that we're gonna get in the habit of drawing all of the forces acting on the object. So if you've got something sliding on a frictionless track, yes, it's being pushed by an applied force, but that's not all there is. This track is probably on Earth, so there's probably a force of gravity pulling down. And if this object isn't falling down, then there's something else working in the upwards direction. And we learned before that this might be something we call a normal force or Fn. Now at first glance, it seems like kind of overkill to be drawing all of these forces. But whenever we have a force problem, we really want to get in the habit of, of drawing a picture that's going to help us understand what's going on here. And this is something called a free body diagram. And we're going to get more practice with it later, but we might as well practice it as we go. So I know that my um, net force is going to equal mass times acceleration. If I'm looking for the acceleration, I could just do some quick algebra here and divide both sides by m and see that acceleration is going to equal the net force divided by the mass. Once I've solved it, I can sum in my values. And so I've got 10 newtons divided by 5.0 kilograms. And so that's going to give me an acceleration of about 2.0 meters per second squared. Now, this acceleration um, is going to be in the same direction as the net force, so I guess I could include the direction here to the right, although leaving it as positive too kind of tells us that it's in that positive direction. I've also kind of showed which way it's going to accelerate with my picture, so I can kind of fall back on my diagram and say, well, look, this is the amount of acceleration and that's the direction. Um, let's do another one here. So a car accelerates to the south. Now, here's the funny thing about um, force diagrams or free body diagrams, I kind of just always draw them going to the right, no matter which way it is. Also, this is the best car that I can draw, and that's just the way it is. It's got tinted windows, so it's super cool. Okay, so this car is accelerating, uh, I'm gonna guess forward, four meters per second squared. So there's probably like a force pushing it this way, where maybe that's an applied force. And then there's probably like a, a force of gravity because most cars I know are on earth and most cars I know don't fall through the road. So there's a normal force upwards. Now, I don't know. There might also be a friction force. There might be some other things going on. But here's the thing. I don't really care 
because they've told me the net force acting on the object, or that's what I'm looking for. So I'm not actually trying to find the applied force, just the net force. And so I can fall back on my formula F net equals M times A. And so the mass is gonna be 650 and the acceleration is 4.0. 650 times 4.0 is 2600 and it's Newtons. And I suppose I should just include, since my picture doesn't really help show that, I'm gonna include south as the direction of my net force. Okay, um, let's do another one. I've got an ice cream truck. Well, I can draw an ice cream truck. That's just a really boxy car. Perfect, awesome. And this ice cream truck accelerates from rest to a top speed of 45 kilometers an hour. That sounds like every ice cream truck I've ever seen. Uh, so it's got like some force pushing it here. And again, maybe I've got some gravity pulling down and maybe I've got a normal force pushing up. Um, and, um, and maybe there's some friction. Again, I don't really know because I'm just looking for the net force on the truck. The problem here is that I haven't been given the acceleration. So I want to use this fancy new formula that I've fallen in love with right away, F net equals MA. I know the mass of the truck, but I don't know the acceleration. And some of you, I can hear you screaming into your cameras right now. I can already feel it. Well, why not just use kinematics? What a great suggestion. So um, just because we're moving on and talking about forces doesn't mean you're not going to be expected to, to still be able to talk in the language of kinematics. And of course, in kinematics, we talked all about accelerations, and now we're just connecting them to this idea of forces. So 45 kilometers per hour is my final speed. My initial speed is zero. My acceleration is I don't know, but I want to. And then my time is eight seconds. Um, I can also hear you yelling through your cameras and saying, please, please, please divide that by 3.6 so that I get um, a uh, final speed of, let me check my cheat sheet here, of, uh, oh yeah, 1 point, nope, just kidding, 12.5 <laughs> meters per second. Now I can crank this into one of the formulas that we learned before, one of our kinematics formulas. I'm going to use this one, V equals V naught plus AT. Solve that for A, A equals V minus V naught divided by T. Plug in my values, 12.5 minus zero divided by eight, gives me 1.5625 meters per second squared. Whew. I can now take this and plug it into my force equation to see what I get for my net force. So F net is gonna equal 1500 times 1.5625, just keeping some extra sig figs just because I wanna, and I get 2343 newtons, which I'm just gonna round off to two sig figs and call it 2300 newtons for my final answer, okay? So if you see an acceleration, uh, it might be a forces question, it might be a kinematics question, it might be both if you're very lucky. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is, we've kind of glossed over this so far, but what happens when we've got multiple forces at the same time? What happens if two things are pushing on an object, or three, or five, or ten? And so in general what we say is, the net force is the sum of the forces. It's the total of all the forces added up. So if forces work together, then we just simply add them up. Right? If you have two vectors that are working in the same direction, then the total or the sum is just those two things added together. So here we go. Stan and Kyle are pushing a sled. So if I've got a little sled here, and um, I'm going to apologize because right about now, all of my art skills are going to go out the window, and I'm just going to start drawing things as boxes because I'm too lazy to do otherwise. That's all I got. Um, they're both pushing this sled. So I'm going to call this maybe FS for Stan, and then uh, another push here, FK for Kyle. Um, probably though there is some gravity pulling down and a normal force upwards if this sled isn't like falling off a cliff or something. Um, and it does actually specify that it's frictionless ice, which begs the question, how are they pushing it in the first place? But um, whatever, it's physics land. So. The net force equation, sometimes you'll see that written as the sum of forces. So another way to, to sometimes write this is to say the sum of the forces. This little sign here is sigma, and it just means sum of. So the sum of all of the vectors. 
And we're going to write an F net equation that, um, that takes into account all of our forces. So I might write it like this. F net equals Fs plus Fk, because I can see they're working together. I'm then going to go ahead and just say equals Ma. And this step right here, this is called a net force equation. This is going to be so, so critical to you being able to solve all of these problems. Um, there isn't one formula for net force. It depends. Are you on a roller coaster? Are you on a rocket ship? Are you in orbit? What you're doing or what the object's doing is going to greatly affect uh, what the net force equation is. And just by finding that, by writing it out algebraically, you're showing that you can interpret that situation. You can figure out and pick it apart and know what's going on. So now that I've got this here, now I can, I can solve and I can go through the math. So I'm going to divide both sides by m and I would get the acceleration is going to equal fs plus fk all divided by m. So I guess that's 55 plus 45 and all of that is divided by 75. And my answer here is um, it's 1.3 repeater, so we'll just go two sig figs, 1.3 meters per second squared. Now, I'm not going to specify any direction because I don't know if it's north or south or east or west, but I can see that the 1.3 just refers to the forward positive direction, and that's good enough. Okay, so that's what we do if we've got a, if we've got two forces that are working together. But if you've got that general situation where maybe two forces are working together or two forces are working against each other, you've got two this way and three that way or whatever it is, just as a general kind of idea of how you want to set this up, we're just going to say that F net, I want you to think of it as just the winners minus the losers. Okay, and what is the winning direction? Well, the winning direction is basically the one that we choose to be positive. And I'm gonna suggest that whichever way it's accelerating, maybe let's choose that as our winning direction. And so all the forces in the winning direction get added up and all the forces in the losing direction get subtracted. So let's try this. The Batmobile exerts a force of that much east. Okay, sounds good. Okay, here is here's my best picture of the Batmobile. It looks like this. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Batmobile. All right, so now the forces. Okay, we've got an applied force, so like the engine exerts a force forwards. I'm just gonna call that FA for applied. Um, it tells me that there's a little friction force back here. So now I've got friction pulling back on it. Um, again, the Batmobile, well usually, not always, but usually it's on Earth, as far as I can tell. And usually, but not always, the Batmobile is not falling through the road, and so there's a, a normal force upwards. Again, just to belabor this point, I know these two forces are equal to each other and they kind of cancel out, but it's important that we show all the forces in any given situation because it might end up having an impact on what's going on. Um, so now I'm going to create my F net equation. So F net is going to be winners minus losers. So in this case, that's the applied force minus the friction force and that equals MA. So again, that right there, such a critical first step. If you can do that, the rest of it's just algebra. And so uh, the acceleration, same algebra to do, is just gonna be an applied force minus the friction force all divided by the mass, which is 8,500 minus 1,500 all divided by 1,250. And this gives me an acceleration of right around 5.6 meters per second squared. Now again, I'm not specifying a direction, but I kind of have for my picture, the Batmobile is accelerating forwards, which makes sense. And then um, I've got my amount right there. Okay, so that's it for Newton's second law.